Coming up next, could your car hold the key to keeping these dangerous bugs out of Center County? I know what experts are doing to protect Central PA. And a local town finds itself in a battle with aggressive birds. Find out what's going on and how people are fighting back. The Center County Report starts now. Good afternoon. I'm Nicole Ambrish. And I'm Erin Kemp. Thanks for joining us. People across Pennsylvania are being warned about a potentially dangerous hitchhiker, but it's not what you might think. Will Desatel has more on efforts to fight a dangerous bug from making its home in central PA. Football season brings thousands of students, families, and fans to University Park, but Penn State wants to make sure visitors are not bringing along a certain guest, the spotted lanternfly which first arrived on the scene in 2014 in Berks County, Pennsylvania, has the potential to harm Pennsylvania's economy by damaging crops and ecosystems. More recently, we've seen injury to grapes in the state uh, that have had as much as 90% loss in their vineyards within one year of some of the feeding from spotted lanternfly. So far, the insect has been contained to a quarantine zone consisting of 13 counties in southeastern Pennsylvania but these insects are crafty hitchhikers. They typically hide and lay their eggs on car bumpers or windshields. Penn State has launched a public awareness campaign asking visitors, especially those coming from southeastern PA, to check their vehicles closely for any spotted lanternfly. The College of Agricultural Sciences is also working diligently to research ways to prevent the spread of this insect. Here at one of the labs in Penn State's Agricultural Sciences Building, a team of researchers is gathering DNA samplings of the spotted lanternfly as part of the ongoing process to prevent the spread of this dangerous insect. They actually have several thousand dead samples in here ready to be dissected and tested. We've been looking at a couple of different native predators that you can purchase online as kind of a pest control for your greenhouse or your own garden. Keeping the spotted lanternfly from invading other parts of the state and beyond is imperative while the university works toward developing control solutions. In University Park, I'm Will Desitel for the Center County Report. For those traveling to Center County this weekend, be sure to check for these unwanted pests. A different kind of animal is causing problems in Belfont. The issue is with vultures. Reporter Bailey McBride has more on what's happening. Prowling the skies high above the Willow Bank building in Belfont, black vultures are wreaking havoc on the roof. The offices below have experienced leaks and replaced roof decks after damage from the aggressive birds which peck at the material. Officials have tried just about everything to get them to stop. Over the summer we have tried many things. The most successful was the robotic eagle, which was helpful because we actually had a real eagle show up for a couple of days right after we installed the robotic one. Because of the building's age, it took officials some time to realize the damage was being done by the vultures. After using rubber matting as the roof replacement, which attracts the birds, there has been upwards of $10,000 in damage. Vultures perch themselves in the 911 tower on the building to give them a better vantage point of the surrounding land and protect their territory against other birds. Experts are working together to find a humane solution to the problem. What we've come up with is something that a lot of other commercial buildings have done, and that's a wire system um, covering the entire roof, and the wires are relatively thin and they're at funny angles so that the birds can't perch on them. They hope this time it works. In Belfont, I'm Bailey McBride for the Center County Report. The death toll from Hurricane Dorian is up to at least 44 people after U.S. emergency workers found five bodies in debris in the Bahamas and they expect to find more. Reporter Talia Chirello has the story. Hurricane Dorian decimated two areas in the Bahamas, Grand Bahama and the Abaco Islands. At least 70,000 people are now homeless. When Dorian hit the Bahamas, it was an incredibly strong storm. The sustained winds were measured at 185 miles per hour, and that was one of the strongest storms, wind speed-wise, that have ever hit the Bahamas. 
Byron Woodside is part of Penn State's Caribbean Student Association that met over the weekend. His family was directly affected by the hurricane. They live in a one-story household and the water just rose so high that it just broke right into the household to a point where their refrigerator is probably like, you know, ye tall and everything is actually like floating in the middle of the water and everything in their living room. Penn State professor Ashley Schroeder specializes in crisis tourism management. She says for the tourism industry to recover there, they'll need to rebuild their reputation and start with a strong public relations strategy. So a major issue is going to be maintaining their reputation as an attractive tourism destination to inform travelers that they are generally open for business and that they do need visitors to come because their economy depends so much on the tourism industry. Right now, residents are trying to fulfill their basic needs like food and clean water. Several international organizations like the World Central Kitchen and even cruise lines are there helping to restore normalcy. I'm Talia Torello for the Center County Report. At least five deaths are also blamed on the storm in the southeastern U.S. and one in Puerto Rico. Donations to help the hurricane victims in the Bahamas are coming in from around the country, including here in our area. A state college barber has decided to host a drive for toiletries, clothing, shoes, and other necessities to send to the islands. He's giving out raffle tickets for free haircuts I've at heard. the pregame barbershop to incentivize donations. Like from my friends that right now in the Bahamas, they need tampons and stuff like that. And you know, something that they would pay for a dollar at the dollar store, they're paying $18 for right now. And that's just unrealistic. The drive is going on until September 27th at 413 East Carter Way in State College. As Nittany Lion football fans head to Beaver Stadium this season, there's a new level of security that tailgaters should be aware of. Reporter Jerome Taylor has a story. 100,000 people on game days. Police on foot, horseback, and even in helicopters are used around the stadium. For some Penn State fans, a new security measure being instituted by police may change the way they feel about tailgating. According to the Penn State Police Department, officers will be using drones this season to ensure a safer tailgating experience. They say the drones can assist police in many ways, including finding evidence, site assessment, and search and rescue. Any footage recorded by the drone can also be used in prosecuting crimes, similar to other surveillance cameras operated by the department. I feel safer, but I also feel a little bit like, almost like more tense. Some people see drones like these as a safer alternative to other security measures police have used in the past. Last year, controversy erupted when a police helicopter flew over a tailgate, sending debris flying. I know there were some issues with helicopters last year. I think some people got injured. Drones are a little more safer. They're a little more um, under the radar. University police declined our request for an on-camera interview. In University Park, I'm Jerome Taylor for the Center County Report. The police drones will be surveying tailgates during every Penn State home football game this season. Will this sunny, warm weather continue all week, or is rain on the way soon? We'll check out the forecast coming up. Plus, University Park Airport is getting new money for new equipment. Find out what's on the way. Also coming up, an annual event brings hundreds of pets together for a day of fun and swimming. We'll take you there to check it out in a little bit. Park Airport will soon be able to improve and expand its operations thanks to two new grants. A $75,000 PennDOT grant will be used for infrastructure and equipment upgrades, according to Governor Tom Wolf's office. That includes sealing of joints on the runway. And over the summer, the airport received $1.8 million from the Federal Aviation Administration. That money is used to update snow removal equipment for this winter. Pennsylvanians who can't vote in person this fall can finally apply online for absentee ballots for the first time. The state made that announcement yesterday. Starting next week, voters can begin to use the new process to get absentee ballots for the November election. You'll need a PennDOT driver's license or ID number. Voters will still have to mail or hand deliver completed ballots to election offices by November 1st.
It's beautiful if you're headed outside right now. The clouds are starting to build into the area. Temperatures right now pretty comfortable, 75 degrees with a southwest wind at nine right now. And radar and satellite, nothing to talk about. Look at the Commonwealth, nothing on the radar right now, just a little bit of clouds. There were some uh, storms that were fizzling off along the east coast, and you can see the clouds are starting to fizzle their way out of Center County as well. Temperatures in central Pennsylvania right now, mid to upper 70s as you zoom out and get a wider look across the Commonwealth. 80 in Erie right now, 78 in Pittsburgh, slightly warmer down in central and southeastern Pennsylvania, 81 in Harrisburg, and 78 in Philadelphia right now. This is all going to change though. We have these two storm systems to the north of us, and they're connected by a couple of fronts. So what that means for us is some increased chances for some showers and storms. So tomorrow afternoon, we'll remain dry for the remainder of tonight and most of the day tomorrow. But tomorrow afternoon, those pop-up showers and storms start to make their way into Center County, and they'll linger overnight Wednesday into the wee wee hours of Thursday morning. And then it's kind of going to be a repeat for Thursday as well. Those showers and pop-up storms will remain in the area until the afternoon on Thursday. For today, it's going to be beautiful, kind of what we've been seeing the past couple of days, mid to upper 70s sunshine, so we'll have a good mix of that today. 80 as our high with that southerly wind. And into tonight, you may want to turn the AC off if you had a blast in the past couple of days, 65 as our low with the west wind at 5 to 7. And then for tomorrow, those uh, storm systems that I just mentioned, we're in the warm section of that. So look at our high tomorrow, flirting with just about 90 degrees. We do have those showers and storms with the westerly wind at 3 to 5. The next seven days, let me time this out for you because those two systems means two things. We have two fronts coming through. So Wednesday, temperatures cool off into the low 80s into Thursday and those scattered showers become more isolated. And then that warm front on Friday means temperatures are going to hop back up into the low 80s by the weekend. But that means an increased chance for some rain by Saturday. We are tracking some rain for the game on Saturday, you guys. So it's not going to be a washout. We are just uh, looking for some showers right now. So stay tuned with us for further updates. So you might want to bring a poncho to the game on Saturday. I've really been enjoying the sunshine the last couple of days, that's for sure. Yeah, it's nice to enjoy the last couple of days of summer. Mm -hmm. The Penn State Dance Marathon teamed up with the Penn State football team over the weekend to raise awareness about pediatric cancer. Reporter Samantha Rank has more. Every February, the Penn State community comes together at the Bryce Jordan Center to raise millions of dollars, hoping to one day cure pediatric cancer. This past weekend, the Thon community joined Penn State football for the annual Thon football game. The Thon football game is our annual partnership um, with Penn State Athletics to uh, not only support the Penn State football team and program, but also Penn State Dance Marathon. Penn Staters at Beaver Stadium had the opportunity to learn more about Thon's mission and donate to the largest student-run philanthropy in the world. Although Thon is still a few months away, Penn State football is FTK today for their annual Thon football game. Players will wear the Thon sticker on their helmets for the second year in a row. Former Penn State football player and two-time Thon dancer told us how much Thon means to the football team. It means so much to our football team and being able to represent the Thon six on the back of our helmets and play for something bigger, so much bigger than Penn State football. September is Child Cancer Awareness Month and Thon Volunteer applauds the impact Thon has on children fighting cancer. People can get involved with Thon by joining a committee or joining other organizations on campus. Um, there's applications to get involved or you can just join an org. Over the last 47 years, Thon has raised more than $168 million. In University Park, I'm Samantha Rank for the Center County Report. Thon 2020 is scheduled for February 21st to the 23rd at the BJC. Now here's Maria Coyne with sports. Speaking of Penn State football, the Lions are getting ready for the 100th edition of their rivalry game with Pitt this weekend. We'll take a look at their game against Buffalo to make them 2-0 on the season. Also coming up, State College High Girls Volleyball is relying on some veteran leaders on the team this season. We'll talk with them next in sports. The Penn State women's soccer team is back in action this Thursday night against Oklahoma State at Jeffrey Field. They're coming off another home win over the weekend. The Nittany Lions walked away with a 2-1 win over James Madison for their fourth straight win so far this season. 
the Dukes got ahead early with a goal from Claire Miser just 43 seconds into the game. But just before halftime, a penalty on Frankie Talia Ferry inside the JMU box set up the Lions for a penalty kick. Talia Ferry missed the kick, but found her own rebound to put the ball back in the net. Penn State went into the half tied 1-1. Coming off a slow start, the Lions dominated on the offensive front with the second half of 12 total shots compared to JMU's four. One of those shots came from redshirt freshman Allie Schlegel, adding a goal of her own in the 52nd minute of an assist from Talia Ferry. That goal would not only give the Nittany Lions their first lead of the game, but the win as well. Penn State football is getting ready for rivalry week as the Pitt Panthers come to town on Saturday. That's the 100th meeting between the two teams. The Nittany Lions are coming off a big win over Buffalo, but their slow start had many fans worried. Courtney Allen reports. More than 104,000 Penn State fans nervously watched at Beaver Stadium as their team struggled in the first half. The Lions were sluggish and the Bulls took a 10-7 lead into the locker room at halftime. Second half, different story. An offensive explosion led to Penn State winning the game 45-13. We were obviously very explosive and we averaged over seven yards per play, but it was too inconsistent. It was either a touchdown or a lot of times three and out. Uh, so we got to be more consistent there. The key turning point? John Reed ran an interception 37 yards for a touchdown early in the third quarter. You know, being able to play with a lead, uh, be able to play with a big lead and not let off, be able to put backups up in and they still play the standard, there, there's lessons to be learned there. Jake Pinegard's 32-yard field goal gave the Lions a 38-13 lead and Sean Jahan Dotson in the fourth quarter for a 56-yard touchdown to seal the deal. The Nittany Lions were a second-half team on Saturday, but Franklin and his players know they may not be able to overcome sluggish starts once the competition gets tougher. At Beaver Stadium, I'm Courtney Allen for the Center County Report. Kickoff for Saturday's game against Pitt is at noon, and you can listen to the game live on Penn State's Com Radio. To high school football now. The State College High School Little Lions played the Holidaysburg Golden Tigers Friday night in their third game of the season. Reporter Samantha Rank has the story. The State College High School Little Lions continued their unbeaten season in front of their home crowd on Friday night. The Lions beat the Holidaysburg Golden Tigers 42-7. Fans turned out to the temporary South Track facility while Memorial Stadium undergoes renovations. The team's marching band and color guard were also back on the same field, sporting their maroon, white, and black attire. The Lions built a big lead, scoring 28 points in the first quarter, and they were up 42-0 at halftime. Some aspiring future football stars talked about their admiration for this year's Little Lions team, pointing out some key players. They got some really good players this year. Seniors are looking good. The team is set to travel this Friday to play the Carlisle Thundering Herd. In State College, I'm Samantha Rank for the Center County Report. Kickoff this Friday night at Carlisle is at 7 o'clock. Also on Friday, the Belfont Red Raiders host Central Mountain. Memorial Field continues renovations this fall sports season, leaving State College High School teams away from their historic home field. The football, soccer, lacrosse, and field hockey teams, along with the marching band and cheerleaders, have moved to other fields in the district for their home games. The estimated $14.3 million renovation field is scheduled to be open for the fall 2020 sports season. Memorial Field has been in its South Fraser Street location since 1937. Renovations also happened in 2013 to the west side bleachers where visiting fans typically sit. State College High School girls volleyball team is off to a hot start with some veteran leaders. Reporter Nicole Ambrish has the story. Coming off a 20-1 season in 2018, the State College Little Lions girls varsity volleyball team is heading into their 2019 season with a winning mentality. The Little Lions are currently 2-0 with wins over Chambersburg and Redland, and their team has its sights set on yet another successful season. Nine letter winners are returning, and among them is Lauren Arnold, one of four returning seniors. As a captain, she's taking her role as a leader seriously, pushing every girl on the floor to be the best they can be. 
We did lose a lot of seniors, so this team is a growth team, and we're working together every single day to work on our communication, to trust each other, and we're doing a really great job of that right now. Head coach Chad Waite, who is in his 10th season as head coach with the Little Lions, says that even though there are quite a few letter winners on his team, there is still a lack of experience. A common theme for the State College High Volleyball team is hard work, and both Coach Waite and senior Lauren Arnold are trying to instill that into their team every day. Work hard. I mean, that's the big one. You have to work hard to get better, and if we're not working hard, we're not getting better. The Little Lions are on the road tonight against the Cumberland Valley Eagles. Junior varsity match is set for 5 p.m. with varsity to follow. In State College, I'm Nicole Amers for the Center County Report. That's all for sports. Now back to you at the Anchor Desk. Thanks, Maria. Coming up next, do you love dogs? If so, you'll like the story about an event in State College that brought hundreds of pets and people together. That's next after the break. Center County residents and their pets were able to cool off this weekend at the Park Forest Community Pool. Reporter Mitch Stewart was on the scene for the 8th Annual Paws of Palooza event, organized by Center County Paws and Center Region Parks and Recreation. Humans are usually the occupants in the Park Forest community pool, but on Sunday afternoon, the pool welcomed in some four-legged friends to get into the action. Paws of Palooza, an event organized by both Center County Paws and Center Region Parks and Recreation, offered local residents a chance to give back to animals in the community while also giving their pets a chance to cool off and mingle with other pups. The event had a session for dogs under 40 pounds, followed by a separate time for the bigger dogs to dive in. Center Region Parks and Recreation Aquatics Director Todd Roth says roughly 120 pets are in attendance each year. The event was free to humans with a $5 cost per dog to enter. Door prizes and a 50-50 raffle were offered as well, with all of the proceeds from the prizes and the gate benefiting the Center County Paws nonprofit organization. As you can see by the great turnout here at the Park Forest Community Pool, that the dog days of summer are absolutely not over. People getting into the pool with their pets, their children getting in as well. And of course, all of the proceeds from this event will go to charity. Established in 1980, Center County Paws has 15 staff members and over 650 volunteers. In addition to finding homes for displaced pets, Paws provides owner education programs and even offers some forms of medical care. The event was fun for both dogs and humans. I've always been a dog person, so uh, the opportunity for them to come and play off leash and have a good time and swim uh, that they typically don't get uh, any time else throughout the year is really fantastic for me. In State College, I'm Mitch Stewart for the Center County Report. Center County Paws will host its next event at the end of September as the 14th annual Paws Fur Ball takes place at the Center County Hills Country Club on Saturday, September 28th. That's all for today's newscast. You can find more of our stories on our website, centercountyreport.com. And you can follow us anytime for breaking news on our Twitter feed. That's at centercountyrep. Or on our Facebook page, we also have Center County Report Instagram. Join us for our next newscast on Friday. Have a good day.